British companies apologize for ties to slavery. London Two major British companies have acknowledged their historic ties to the slave trade and pledged new financial support to black and minority ethnic communities. Lloyds of London, the world's oldest insurance market, and pub chain Green King said in statements late Wednesday that they would take steps to make their businesses more racially inclusive and provide financial support to black and minority ethnic groups. The companies are highlighted in a University College London database exploring the legacies of British slave ownership. Britain enslaved 3.1 million Africans between 1640 and 1807, transporting them to colonies around the world, according to Historic England, a public body. The database shows that the family of Simon Fraser, a founding subscriber of Lloyd's of London, owned slaves on an estate in what is now Guyana. Lloyd's has a long and rich history dating back over 330 years, but there are some aspects of our history that we are not proud of, the company which insured slave ships, said in a statement. In particular, we are sorry for the role played by the Lloyd's market in the 18th and 19th century slave trade. This was an appalling and shameful period of English history, as well as our own, and we condemn the indefensible wrongdoing that occurred, it added. The company said it values an inclusive culture and has committed to a number of new diversity initiatives, including a program to attract and retain black and minority ethnic workers, it said it will review employee policies and the way it presents its history and provide an undisclosed amount of money to organizations promoting opportunity for black and minority ethnic groups. Green King founder Benjamin Green was compensated by the UK government when he relinquished slaves on his sugarcane plantations in the West Indies, according to University College London. The money he was paid would be worth nearly £3.6 million, $4.5 million, today, according to the university. It is inexcusable that one of our founders profited from slavery and argued against its abolition in the 1800s, Green King CEO, Nick McKenzie said in a statement. Today, I am proud that we employ 38,000 people across the UK from all backgrounds and that racism and discrimination have no place at Green King, he added. McKenzie said the chain, which was purchased last year by a company belonging to Hong Kong billionaire Lee Ka Shing, plans to make a substantial investment to benefit the black and minority ethnic community and support race diversity in its business. The Telegraph was first to report the news. Black Lives Matter protests have erupted across the United Kingdom in recent weeks after George Floyd, an unarmed black man, was killed by a police officer in the United States. UK protesters tore down a statue of slave trader Edward Colston in Bristol on June 7 and tossed it into a nearby river. There have been calls to remove several other statues of historical figures who supported slavery and colonialism, and London Mayor Sadiq Khan is reviewing the capital statues and street names with a view to remove any with links to slavery. Oxford University's Oriel College said Wednesday that it wishes to remove a statue of colonialist Cecil Rhodes. Major companies around the world are also grappling with how to address racial injustice. Many have pledged to increase minority hiring, and some have donated to charitable organizations. A handful have even taken steps to acknowledge past racist behavior or problematic branding. The corporate owners of Cream of Wheat and Jemima and Uncle Ben's have pledged to review or overhaul the brands, which have long been criticized for perpetuating racial stereotypes. When colonial slavery was abolished in 1833 the British government paid £20 million, $25 million, to compensate slave owners, while the enslaved received nothing. In today's terms, that equates to around £16.5 billion, $20.6 billion, Historic England said on its website. The money the UK government borrowed to fund the Slavery Abolition Act was fully repaid only in 2015 due to the type of financial instrument used, according to the UK Treasury. Click subscribe to receive the latest news.